all people are created equal and all their lives they fight against that. No idea who said that, but that's quite an idea. This is Alexandra Lewandowska, look before you leap into the deep. This Sunday we are meditating on equality, joy, love and purpose, so a lot of work ahead of us. And the Gospel for tomorrow is precisely about work. Let's read the parable about the workers in the vineyard, Matthew 20 verses 1 to 16. Now the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner going out at daybreak to hire workers for his vineyard. He made an agreement with the workers for one denarius a day and sent them to his vineyard. Going out at about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, you go to my vineyard too and I will give you a fair wage. So they went. At about the sixth hour and again at about the ninth hour, he went out and did the same. Then at about the eleventh hour, he went out and found more men standing around and he said to them, why have you been standing here idle all day? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you go into my vineyard too. In the evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his bailiff, Call the workers and pay them their wages, starting with the last arrivals and ending with the first. So those who were hired at about the eleventh hour came forward and received one denarius each. When the first came, they expected to get more, but they too received one denarius each. They took it, but grumbled at the landowner, saying, the men who came last have done only one hour, and you have treated them the same as us, though we have done a heavy day's work in all the heat. He answered one of them and said, My friend, I am not being unjust to you. Did we not agree on one denarius? Take your earnings and go. I choose to pay the last comma as much as I pay you. Have I no right to do what I like with my own? Why should you be envious? Because I'm generous. Thus the last will be first, and the first last. I can't even tell you how many times I've heard motivational speakers say, you are good enough. The problem is, is that really what we want to hear? Imagine you just got married and your spouse says to you, honey, of all the people I could have chosen, I decided to marry you. Because you, my love, are good enough. How romantic is that? It seems that the workers who worked the longest in the vineyard didn't really mind that they were not the only ones who were chosen, as long as they could keep the status of being the more chosen, the chosener. Perhaps it wasn't really that much about the money, but maybe if they got one denarius and chocolate or one denarius and a gift back, or one denarius and certificate of appreciation, there would be at least some distinction, some demonstration of hierarchy and proof to the old adage that the harder you work, the higher you go. Well, that works in business sometimes, not all of the time. But love doesn't work that way. Love is not about work in the first place. But the way this world works is full of incongruencies. We say we value team spirit, but then we reward individual achievement. We say we love our children unconditionally, but we expect them to be super productive and to make us proud. And children can usually sense if all these extra classes that they get, those music lessons are for them so that they can develop, or for their parents so that they can boast about how the child is doing. Doing, 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 doing. For so many years, and especially recently, in the wake of artificial intelligence, we've been terrorized with the idea of being useful. Now, I don't have in mind here the fact of giving value to this world. That's a completely different thing. You know that you've been terrorized by the concept of being useful when, for example, you like to play the guitar, but you don't do it. Because if you can't play well enough to be the next Eric Clapton, then what's the point? Or you never stop just to look at the sky and whistle because it doesn't bring you closer to your goal, whatever that is. 
or you only talk to people who you think can advance your career and everything else is a waste of time. So there is this tendency to monetize what we do, to get value for what we do, to expect that value. And the paradox here is that we work so hard and we use our talents and achievements as a sort of an entry ticket to this world that says, look, I have the right to be here. My existence is justified because this is what I do. This is what I bring to the table and I want you to recognize me for that. But the moment somebody does it, the moment somebody shows you that they love you for what you do, you get resentful. Because deep down in your heart, all that time, you wanted to be loved unconditionally, regardless of what you do. The workers in the vineyard were rewarded regardless of how much they did. They didn't really earn that denarius because a denarius was worth one day of work and some of them didn't even work one hour. What's more, some of them weren't even promised any money to begin with and they still went to work. So it wasn't really about work, it wasn't about pay, it was about the landlord saving the unemployed from meaningless idle existence. The first workers complained that they had to work harder for the same amount but if there ever was a time in your life where you felt you don't know what to do with yourself, you felt you don't have any purpose in life and you were waiting for somebody to, to pick you, to choose you, to show you some direction, you know that this experience is far more tiring than any work. One denarius is one day of work. One day of life. At the end of the day, they were all given life. So if you think that some people have more life or better life than they deserve, perhaps you've lost contact with your own life. Maybe you no longer see the value, you no longer feel the pleasure from doing what you do. Or even worse, perhaps you actually went to work to the wrong vineyard. And maybe you work harder than what you signed for. So if you feel that other people have it easier, that God loves them more and he doesn't appreciate what you do, let's have a look at your employment contract and read the small print this Sunday, 10pm Central European time.